Hi everybody, it's your AP Bio teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are starting the fourth unit in AP Biology, which is on the cell communication and the cell cycle. So obviously we've been talking about cells for pretty much this entire class so far. We've talked about the molecules that make them up, we've talked about their structure and functions, all the organelles, we've talked about how they metabolize and the different uh, chemical me metabolic functions that they have. Um, but in this unit, we're going to continue talking about cells by discussing A, how they communicate with each other, and B, their life cycle and the implications that that has on uh, the cell's ability to function. All right, and well, we're going to be talking about communication and how they must communicate with each other in order to carry out homeostasis within a human being or within any kind of organism. All right, so here we go. 4.1 is on cell communication. This is going to be an overview of how cells are able to communicate with each other. Um, so let's start with this. All cells must be able to communicate with each other whether or not they're unicellular, which means they're made up of one cell. This could be a bacterial cell or uh, it's a eukaryote like an amoeba or something like that, or it could be multicellular. So think about this. Your body is made up of trillions and trillions of cells. How are they all able to function as one particular unit? You are one organism, but you are made of trillions of other different organisms. So how are they able to function all together? Well, cells need to be able to communicate. And the main way that cells communicate with each other is through chemical signals that they send to one another. All right, it's like almost like passing a note or passing a letter um, in some senses. So cells generate, transmit, receive, and respond to chemical signals. All right, and these signals can be coming from close by, they can be coming from far away, they can be sent through the bloodstream, all sorts of stuff. Um, what you're seeing over here on the right is kind of this generalized um, image of cell signaling over here. Uh, more specifically, it's long distance signaling because this is a hormone over here, but this looks should look a little bit familiar um, if we studied biology before. We got plasma membrane, we got the nucleus, DNA, cytoplasm. Um, so we're going to be coming back to this, this picture quite a bit because it offers a nice uh, overview of what cell communication is about. One of the main ways that cells are able to communicate with each other is through direct contact, touching each other. Um, you know, if you've got trillions of cells, often in time there's going to, they're, they're going to be touching each other um, in one way or another. And by connecting cytoplasm between them, so kind of like adjoining their, their membranes even, or adjoining their cell walls in the case of plant cells, um, this is a good way for them to communicate. So they may communicate through direct contact, um, gap junctions in animals and something called plasmodesmata in plants allow those cytoplasms to connect uh, through adjacent cells. Alright, so as we can see we got a drawing over here of plant cells, alright, and we see these tiny little kind of gaps in between each cell wall. Those are called plasmodesmata and what they're able to do is send each other cytoplasm and whatever else is in the cytoplasm. Um, which may contain some kind of chemical signal. And these chemical signals that cells send to each other may elicit some kind of response that it could be gene expression, it could be the release of a hormone, it could be uh, proliferation and growth, it could be a lot, a lot of different things. Um, cells have very, very many functions. Um, so yeah, they can be told to do a lot of things as well. All right, so in another example of how direct contact is an excellent form of communication between cells, um, well, most of the time, uh, is through membrane-bound surface molecules called antigens. And in fact, your immune system, which is your body's way of defending against, you know, things that shouldn't be in there, um, is reliant upon connecting antigens to one another. So these are, uh, these are all types of immune cells. You may have heard of a T helper cell or a helper T cell, and these are the cells that are actually most affected by um, human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. So the way that e these immune cells communicate with one another is through antigens, these surface proteins, and they can actually connect their antigens on the surface of their cell membrane, um, which is going to cause a cellular, cellular response um, in other cells that, you know, attach their antigens, all right? So by attaching these antigens together, they can send each other signals and they can elicit an immune response, like say the release of antibodies, um, release of macrophages or killer T cells. All right, and those are all going to help you try to keep you safe from whatever's entering your body. But you know, there needs to be a kind of line of command for that to happen. And antigens through direct contact is one way of doing that. All right, but most of the other signaling um, is what we call local signaling or long distance signaling. 
Um, so local signaling is communicating with nearby or adjacent cells. So uh, direct contact is an example of local signaling. But we also have some of these new terms, which is autocrine signaling, synaptic signaling, and paracrine signaling. And we're going to walk through what each one of those are momentarily. And then, of course, we have long distance signaling, which is communicating with distant cells, cells that are not in um, one cell's particular area. And that's called endocrine or hormonal signaling. Um, so this picture down here kind of gives us an overview of what we're looking at. Autocrine is when a cell sends a message to itself. Um, there's a reason for that. Um, paracrine is sending a message to a nearby cell, and endocrine is sending a message to a distant cell. So let's walk through what each one of these are. Autocrine signaling is, like I said, is when a send, cell sends and receives its own signal. All right, so this might be involved in like a positive feedback loop, which is kind of like a vicious cycle, right? A cell sends a signal um, as a result of some kind of stimulus, and by receiving more of that signal, it receives more of this, or sends out more of this uh, uh, response. So it might just be like this feedback loop. This is actually a topic that we're going to get into uh, later in this unit, our feedback loops. So autocrine signaling does have its place. Paracrine signaling involves one cell secreting molecules that act on nearby target cells. Okay, so we've got a picture of paracrine signaling down here. Um, one cell is releasing a lot of different, a lot of signal okay, that all of these cells in these adjacent and in, in these uh, in the area are picking up and receiving. So an example of this would be growth factors stimulating nearby cells to grow and divide, and numerous cells respond. So a growth factor is any kind of um, molecule, any kind of ke chemical that will trigger a cell to proliferate, divide and or grow. Another example of paracrine signaling is uh, the release of histamine. Okay, So like say when you have allergies, um, you take in some kind of allergen through your nose um, and one of your cells picks up on that Okay, and it sends out this chemical called histamine and histamine will argue, is going to cause all the other cells in the area to elicit some kind of immune response. Um, so like sneezing um, is an example of a result of paracrine signaling as well, some kind of allergic response. Um, so that's an, that's paracrine signaling for you. Um, synaptic signaling is actually the process by which um, a neuron releases a neurotransmitter into a synapse stimulating a target cell. So this is the process by which your nervous system actually functions. And I don't know if you know this, but your nervous system is a big deal. It controls and responds to, uh, well, it controls your body's um, sensory information and its motor output and that's really, really, really important. You know, without your brain and your spinal cord, you're pretty much done. Um, so, and those all are operating between, you know, neurons. And how do neurons communicate with each other? It's by sending signals, chemical signals from one to the next that elicit a response. All right, so by, you know, by moving my, my diaphragm to push out the air and, you know, shaping the, shaping the muscles in my face in order to make words, I, my brain is sending signals via neurons to these muscles in order to tell them what to do. Um, and that is, without synaptic signaling, we can't really do that. Um, so these little these signal molecules that neurons send to each other, they're called neurotransmitters. You may have heard of them, some of them before. So like serotonin, dopamine, adrenaline, acetylcholine, they're, those are all neurotransmitters. And hopefully we'll discuss these a little bit more in detail uh, later on this year. All right, and then finally, our long distance signaling is called endocrine signaling. You actually have an organ system. It's called the endocrine system. So this includes like your pituitary gland, your thyroid, uh, maybe lymph nodes. I don't know about lymph nodes, but uh, you have a whole bunch of glands everywhere in your body that are releasing chemicals into bodily fluids to target distant cells, okay, or distant target cells that respond to each one of those uh, chemical signals. All right, so say for example, look, this is just the digestive system over here, um, but some of your most famous hormones, um, endocrine, you know, endocrine chemical messengers are insulin and glucagon. All right, we've talked about those in class before, but insulin and glucagon, those are sent into the bloodstream and they're picked up by cells that are, you know, further away that tell them, hey, you need to take in more glucose um, from the bloodstream or you need to release more glucose into the bloodstream in the case of glucagon. Um, so you got you got so many different kinds of hormones all over your body. The endocrine system is really, really, it's kind of complicated, honestly. But uh, the, the point that I'm trying to make here is that long distance signaling involves these chemical messengers called hormones. And they are usually sent through what's called uh, lymph 
fluid, lymphatic fluid, or they're sent through your circulatory system. All right, so they're put into the blood, and the blood is like a, or the cardiovascular system is like a super highway that can carry it, uh, chemicals where they need to go. All right, so here's endocrine signaling. This cell is releasing it into the bloodstream, and these cells are more distant, and they're going to pick up those signals. All right, that is it for this video. We're going to get into 4.2, Introduction to Signal Transduction, um, in our next video. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye.